Lynn Van Voice. So, um, how's everyone doing? I'm good. So, thanks for coming out tonight. We have, um, where it's April 24th, and we have three weeks left, and then the final week. Not to, not to accentuate the countdown, just kind of putting us in perspective here. So, um, and I think, uh, in general, for the rest, uh, for tonight at least, we'll try it. And if it works even semi well, I would suggest that for the rest of the weeks in this Wednesday class, we have half the class open to a sort of lab around working on projects. And that would be open to both classes. So um, I think that would be healthy for everybody. And uh, I remember once a long time ago, a student asked me, so are you going to talk for three hours every week? <laughs> so for the rest of the semester, I will no longer talk for three hours straight every week. So. Uh, the, wi the wisest question I've ever had in all my years of teaching. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Write up like an essay. Um, what made you say that? <laughs> and I'll give you credit for that. So <laughs> the secret is out. <laughs> so, uh, somebody had a question or was just raising their hand or what was the question? Uh, you, you're not eligible. There, there was only one student that was eligible for the extra credit. So, um, Cal. So, um, okay. So tonight, though, uh, before we get started into a lab, or, and I thought the second half of the class we would do that, uh, unless we want to switch it, but that probably wouldn't work because might be people leaving before that. So I thought we'd go into um, building a, a mobile website, which I think pertains to both classes at least more than tangentially, uh, in that the advanced Dreamweaver class should go through this material. And jQuery mobile is a big part of the integration that Dreamweaver has done to enable uh, mobile websites. It's got uh, some features that embed the jQuery mobile libraries into the Dreamweaver IDE, integrated development environment. Uh, and for the HTML5 class, I think it's perfectly appropriate to understand some of the capabilities that jQuery mobile brings, like touch interface and um, uh, uh, orientation, which is built in. Uh, orientation is the ability to use the gyroscope in mobile devices to change the perspective from landscape to, uh, or from portrait to landscape or whatever, right? So uh, those are just some features that are built into typical mobile interfaces that jQuery mobile provides capabilities of to capture. And based on our jQuery lecture from a couple of weeks ago, how do you think those will be implemented? What, what would an orientation feature within jQuery mobile look like? It would be, I'm sorry? Uh, uh, it could be, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Uh, it could be a media query in that, because media queries are dynamic. <laughs> and you could change the CSS based on, yeah, so I think that is the way they're implemented. We could take a look. Uh, they could also be in a, an event, you know, a jQuery event should this happen or respond in this way. And in jQuery mobile, it might be implemented in both ways. Yeah. In fact, we could take a look. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit about what jQuery is, or what jQuery mobile is. We should know what jQuery is, right? So jQuery, we already talked about a couple of weeks ago. jQuery is this uh, series of libraries. Two weeks ago, we had a sort of in-depth lecture on jQuery core library. And this week, we're going to talk about the jQuery mobile library, right? Uh, and the jQuery mobile library is a different, it, it's, it's above and beyond jQuery core. In other words, J, it's dependent on jQuery core. So every jQuery mobile site requires you to um, 
include the jQuery core library in your in their pages. Does that make sense? Just like Bootstrap is dependent on jQuery core, right? Uh, jQuery mobile, unlike Bootstrap, is designed almost specifically for mobile, not responsive websites. And that's that's probably the key point. Uh, that's probably the key point to learn tonight, in fact. <laughs> we'll learn a lot of techniques about how to build these sites. But the first question is, do you need a mobile website or not? <laughs> uh, if you've built a really nice, responsive website, a mobile website might be the last thing to help whatever the organization is that you've built that website for. Uh, it might confuse things. It, it, because And because jQuery Mobile is not really designed to implement a responsive layout infrastructure, uh, it really is designed to build just a mobile site, and uh, which might be fine for some businesses, but aren't going to be fine for most businesses <laughs> or organizations, because you're going to get uh, you know a somewhat weird interface on traditional laptops and things like that. So what typically happens? <laughs> is that jQuery mobile is used more to build like HTML5 uh, ways of building mobile mobile apps. You know, instead of using the, the, the native iPhone or Android operating system development environments, jQuery mobile makes it much faster and quicker to build a mobile app-like thing, product, application, uh, that is built all on HTML5, right? Well, when I say HTML5, I mean, you know, no compiled code, no C++, no Objective-C. It's all HTML, CSS, JavaScript. All runs in a browser. So, when you're dealing with jQuery Mobile, do you have to hard code the screen size into the application? No, it, it, it adapts pretty well to, you know, so, uh, so it does adapt to mobile environments, but it doesn't adapt. It does not necessarily a responsive layout. It doesn't change the layout. So it's adaptive, but it's not responsive. It's adaptive, but not responsive. It's fluid, but not responsive. Okay. Right, right. Yeah. So you don't have to hard code necessarily. It with it might include some mobile. I mean, some media query capabilities to do some of that adaptability, but it really isn't. It doesn't really inherently come with a grid system to respond uh, your column page layout structures based on width, based on the current width of the, disk, of the, unit, of the uh, user agent. So, um, so, but that's an important point. And so where jQuery mobile is used to build websites, often it will be a second website for the same organization to their main site. And that might be an alternative based on the situation that makes sense for specific situations. Does that make sense? So if you have a, uh, uh, what's it, what would be a good example? The, this college might be a good example, right? Um, it might be a good, they have a lot, they have a big website that has a lot of services. You could call every department, you could look up every teacher in every class, look at the online catalog and all that. But, uh, but you really can't see it on a mobile phone very well unless you scroll in, you know, really deep. Uh, and to take all that and rebuild each page layout might be something that's beyond the scope of what they could do in the short term. So they might want to build a very, you know, a, a minimum minimal site, and they might be able to do it in such a way that some of those services are still exposed, but through, you know, more of a client-server environment like we've learned in this class. Because where is the course catalog, is it sitting in the website? No, it's, it's in a database, and the website is, you know, referring to it through PHP or something. All right, so if we, what I'm talking about here, centerosa.edu, if we go uh, college, well, that's not it, but if we go to your course outline information, and look up cs 53111 b is this our class? So, you know, that's in a database, obviously, right? 
uh, we, if you've learned anything in this, uh, in this advanced Dreamweaver class, <laughs> that should be somewhat apparent, right? So, um, uh, so a mobile website might be able to tap into those same services, but provide it through a different interface, right? Um, but the point is, if it's static information on the on the on the website, you would have to create a whole new website <laughs> using jQuery Mobile to duplicate that. So, in which doesn't make a lot of sense. So, I've, I've linked a couple of articles on our webpage this week that go through the pros and cons of responsive versus mobile. But in most cases, if you're starting from scratch, or you have an opportunity to start from scratch, responsive makes a lot more sense, right? You'd rather have a, what's a good analogy? Um, in the real world, there's not many good analogies. I can't say you'd rather have a car that you could turn into a truck because that, would, that wouldn't really work very well. <laughs> maybe people have tried it. Uh, but anyway, maybe there isn't a good analogy in the real world. But the point is, uh, in almost all cases, if you're starting with a new website, responsive makes a lot more sense. And intuitively, that should make sense. It, one, one block of code works for all environments. And you should be able to control it well enough to get a really good layout in all situations. So that all that said, jQuery Mobile is still a super cool tool. And uh, you could use WordPress. You could use Dreamweaver. You could take like, uh, you could be a super smart person and take a three hour, build a website with Dreamweaver in the continuing education of Santa Rosa, JC, or whatever. And I guarantee, or you could use uh, Blogger or anything. And I almost guarantee that you can't build a website as fast as you can using jQuery Mobile, right? Uh, so speed isn't everything. <laughs> but the fact is you can get a really cool, modern, up-to-date up -to site with jQuery Mobile incredibly quickly. Uh, just because the tools that jQuery Mobile provides to allow you to do so are sort of really simple to learn, really simple to use, and really flexible, right? So, uh, and that's what I'm going to demonstrate uh, today. So any questions about any of this before we talk for three hours? Hour and a half. Everyone's afraid to ask questions because then I'll talk for three hours. So, uh, okay, so, the, um, so let's get started. So uh, let's see. If I go, just go to jQueryMobile.com, unfortunately, the one night I wanted to show you guys this, this whole part of the site is down. So uh, I don't know why, but we can't. So I, you know, I noticed it from my site. I thought it was a bad link, but it, it actually is on their site. You can't get to it. So I don't know what that means. But even just from this home page, uh, in fact, right from this home page, we can get started building a jQuery mobile website because this Codica tool uh, really gives us a, which is built directly into their home page and accessible right through your browser, gives you a pretty decent way of using the jQuery mobile specific widgets within a pretty basic HTML infrastructure. So, uh, and the, the, the other part of it is, so we really have a two step process in this. One is to create the HTML, like at any site, and the other is to create the CSS. And this uh, theme builder, or theme roller, sorry, get rolling, is sort of the CSS part of the amazingly rapid development environment that jQuery Mobile gives you. Because right within this interface, you could sort of take the widgets that you've put on using Codica onto the page and see how they'd look given either pre-built uh, themes or customized pre-built themes or themes that you customize from scratch, right? So let's take a, uh, let's take one of these themes here. How do we choose a theme? Huh. 
right? So uh, unlike jQuery UI, it doesn't really have like preset themes, at least from what I could see, other than this first one. So what you would do is modify this one. So you'd say, and what font do I want to use? Well, let's use Arial. Right, or let's use right, and it live actually changes your whatever demo demonstration display. Or let's use uh how So, uh, and literally you just go through all the elements uh, and you could even create sub-themes. These swatches are kind of sub-themes which you could apply in your CSS in specific instances, right? But before we get to that, first let's start with the Codeca part of it. So, uh, Uh, or actually, before we get into that, let's kind of start with some of the basic concepts of jQuery Mobile. So, what is it? What are its goals? Goal number one is uh, it tries to optimize a site for a mobile environment, which includes one optimizing network traffic. Right. So a jQuery mobile site is actually, uh, in almost all cases, one document, one web page document. And your different virtual pages are just subsections of that one document. And the concept of that is your document is downloaded once, and as you go from page to page, you don't have to wait for the network to go back to the server and get another page. Does that make sense? They're all, yeah, they all kind of go into one file. Uh, now the content can uh, either be Ajaxed in when it's called, or it could even be on a remotely Ajaxed in. You know what I mean? So, what do I mean by that? There are ways you can refer to data on a static site in some cases, like. Through RSS, for example. So uh, one way you might implement this with WordPress, WordPress allows you a simple feature to pr provide an RSS feed of all of your content on the site. And w you could create a jQuery mobile page that, uh, that might be page two <laughs> of a jQuery mobile site, which is just a block of code within a one document page. But within there, it knows to Ajax in a specific RSS address of your WordPress site. Right? So it could either be remote like that, or it could just be content directly that's in that file. Right? But yeah, in, it, it's not. You don't have to. You're not. You're not required to build a site like that. But in general, one of the benefits of jQuery Mobile is it makes it very simple to build a site where the several pages are all within one document. And as you navigate, you're really uh, hiding and displaying panels in a way. Right? And, and then to another level, as you hide and display those panels, you might or might not be getting the content either from the server or you already have it in the document. Right? So, uh, so one of the concepts is it tries to minimize network traffic or optimize being, you know, a mobile app, which means uh, here in Sonoma County things aren't, you know, that bad. But you know, 80% of the people are looking at it in a metro in Paris or New York or Singapore where there's low bandwidth and they need to know where the train is and things like that. So um, the other thing it's optimized for. Like a lot of what jQuery tries to strive for is to remove the various differences in platform in, in platforms that it tries to serve above it. So you don't. So jQuery Mobile has a an event called swipe left and swipe right, 
and you don't have to know that what that means for an Android or an iPhone. It, it, it sort of abstracts that from you. Does that make sense? So uh, it, it exposes events and other features that, uh, that, that, that is sort of platform generic that can be implemented uh, by the specific platform be, be, you know, under the scenes where you don't have to see it, you know, based on what the browser, you know, protocol is or events are for that one particular browser operating system situation, right? It doesn't need to go all the way to the operating system itself. Why? Because we're really not building mobile apps. We're building HTML5 apps, HTML5 web apps that are optimized for mobile smartphone devices, right? That makes, that's another clear distinction that I think I said, but it probably bears repeating, right? jQuery mobile doesn't build mobile apps like a compiled app. It's not something you would put on the app store, the, app, the iPhone app store, the Android app store. There's, there's still just websites. You get to them through a URL. They just look and behave more like web uh, mobile apps because they respond to things like swipe and orientation and things like that. Right? So uh, we talked about the multi-page in one document. Let's see, what are the other concepts of jQuery and mobile? Um, it, to do so, it uses a lot of some of the techniques that we learned in this class. Uh, particularly the data attribute techniques that we've learned in this class using uh, applying our own custom attributes to page elements to hold data where we need to. jQuery does a fair amount of that. And as you see, as it builds out its HTML, it kind of knows how to do that. Um, in the real world, uh, in the real world, in, <laughs> in the commercial web design business for small businesses, uh, building mobile apps is probably the hottest market right now. And, you know, I know companies that even in, just based in Santa Rosa that survive just building mobile websites, you know, uh, just on jQuery mobile. Um, and, uh, and, you know, a typical mobile website would be, you know, starting at least, you know, a couple hundred dollars depending on the features, you know, up to a thousand or more, and you probably, sh and you could be able to do it in, you know, an hour <laughs> or less, theoretically. I mean, to do it right, we're probably talking no more than three or four hours, even with some sophisticated features. In, in our JavaScript class, we built one with geolocation in less than a three-hour class, right, where from Mary's Pizza Shack, but I actually looked up the locations and, and did all that. So, uh, and that was like we built it, you know, line by line. Once you have a template to build out something like that, it's a big opportunity for people who specialize in just this one tool, uh, you know, uh, to build a lot of sites and vol volume. Uh, but as I said, it's sort of like a, it's a weird market. <laughs> There's a lot of people that want these, but in general, you're much better off, even if it means redesigning a site, starting with a responsive layout, in my opinion. You know, it's, it, it's, the, it's, it's more geared towards the future and sustainable, a sustainable site than building a mobile site on top of a, an existing site. You know what I mean? But that said, there's a lot of opportunity to build these things. There's a lot of, and, and some businesses don't require a full site, you know. Uh, some sites are just more geared towards mobile. And then if they don't look great on the laptop, it's good enough. You know what I mean? Because jQuery mobile sites do show up in any browser, even a laptop. They just, you know, they look kind of blocky. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, they're not really laid out with columns. Uh, but, uh, and for some, you know, food trucks or, you know, things like that, that are really mobile-oriented businesses, Maybe a mobile only site makes sense, you know. And who knows, three or four years from now, people are saying 50-60% uh, of the traffic is going to be on smartphones. So anyway, 
So uh, this Codica tool, let's just start messing around with it. I have, uh, I'm just kind of, I've done this a few times before, but not in a while. So we're just kind of exploring here. So explore with me. I don't think there's really a tutorial, step-by-step -step tutorial per se. Uh, our goal is, you know, we have about an hour left before we break, is to see how far we can get to building a multi-page site. So um, uh, let's see. To, to do this, you literally, all, all you have to do is look at this toolbar and look at the widgets available to you. These are all the widgets. These are the toolbar -y type of widgets, the buttons. So as a start, let's just create a page header, right? And we just drag a page header onto the, I don't know what you would call this, the finger top, <laughs> whatever, the touch screen. <laughs> and, uh, and that's called our header. And we could give it uh, text just by double clicking on it and say, welcome to our website, All right? And uh, we could give it, you could start to see that it kind of has a little bit of a Dreamweaver properties panel look to it. Very limited, but a lot of the things that we typically now use the property panel for, right? What's the ID? What's the classes of this element? Right. So that doesn't seem to fit unless I make the size smaller. Uh, and I'm not sure what the size does. And I don't want to duplicate that. Uh, there we go. So let's just say welcome. Okay. And then we can add a footer. Oops. If we click on the text there, we could say uh, whatever. Um, please visit us. And uh, let's add a navigation bar, right? So the navigation bar is basically a button set, right? Uh, right, so you can add buttons to the navigation bar. This would be, you know, uh, about us. And let's add a new button. That would be uh, products. And a new button that would be contact. Right? And maybe on the contact, so So now, uh, in this in this interface, we can only build one page, right? Uh, however, in the jQuery mobile environment, which hopefully we can get to, we're going to be able to build um, a. It gives you a template for a multi-page site. And what we're going to do is take those pages we designed in Codica and plug those into that multi-page site, right? It's a typical way I would go about doing it. So uh, let's see how to do that. And I think to do that, is it download? I think it's in this part that we can't get to. <laughs> Maybe we could do it in Theme Builder, Theme Builder. The contain. Hmm. All right. 
let's see. Articles and tutorials. Okay, let's do this. I think it's in that area that I can't get to for some reason. So jQuery mobile multi-page template. There we go. There we go. Okay, so uh, I'm going to put this link. into the online class. And so uh, what this is, so actually let's take a look at this. So this is basically a jQuery mobile page, right? And this is what it would look like, like in a laptop environment. This is typically what it would look like on a smartphone, right? And this probably uses the base theme roller theme, you know what I mean? That one that just pops up in theme roller. And the HTML for this is all in one page, right? So if we go back to where we originally entered this page, we should be able to copy all the HTML from the page source, right, from here, and get that template. And what we would have here is a three-page, so if you look up here, you would see that we have a three-page multi-page template here, right? Page one, which is called page one, or one. <laughs> uh, page two, and then uh, the popover, the, the, the well, actually, uh, yeah. So the third page is called I idea of popover, right? And I'll show you how that works. Oops. If you go to this one, that shows the, that's not right. Let's see. This is two. It's the pop-up. Yeah. What I like is the pop-over. Have you seen that? The pop-over menu? Which the, the template I think used to show uh, instead of the pop-up. Let's see if there's a demo. Uh, well, it, uh, here, let's see if I can show it. Uh, uh, overlay widget, I think it's called. Let's see if I can. Uh, pop over menu. Here we go. Uh, no. It's the pop -up. Anyway, maybe I could find it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, see, the problem is all those are in demos, and I can't get to the demos. <laughs> I don't know why. So anyway, sorry to be distracted. So, uh, so essentially, I'm going to take this page, uh, the whole thing, and just copy it right from page source. Bang. And as you can see, I didn't even need to, if I take this page, I didn't even need to, down, for today's purposes, it's the simplest way to do it, because I don't even need to download any of the libraries. Right? I don't need the CSS library at this point. I could change it through theme roller, and then later change my CSS to my own, and all the classes and all that stuff will still work, right? But at this point, I could just take the default just by doing this. So let's go into uh, an edit, let's go into Dreamweaver. And I'm just going to go to my student server. Actually, I'm going to go to this one. Uh, I'm going to create a new folder and call this mobile. And I am going to uh, create a new file, which will be HTML, HTML5, 
And in the code editor, I'm just going to replace all the code with the code I got right from that template. Right? And let's uh, save this and then we'll explore this code. Dreamweaver is going to crash. Give me a second here while Dreamweaver decides will those two crash or not. What do you think? Force quit? Okay, so uh, mobile is there. I create a new file. I save it. good news is, at least it crashes more elegantly than it does on Windows, but <laughs> I don't know what the problem is here. We're just saving a file. Give it another minute. Oh, there we go. All right. Index. And I want to put it in mobile. Okay. All right. So uh, what is this code all about? So like I said, it has three basic pages or two basic pages and a pop-up page, right? And it's basically a demonstration of how to build a multi-site, multi-page site in one document, right? So uh, the best way to demonstrate it is to build out the pages in Codeca like we started to do, right? So now we could go back to this Codeca page that we, do we still have it? Mine is not. Mine is gone, so let's just build it again and just say welcome. And let's uh, give it a nav bar. And let's, uh, this would be home about us and Contact. How is that? And then let's give it a page footer. Oops. And a page footer should be. Uh, what's the name of this site? Uh, SRJC. How's it? Yeah. Jay's Pizza. It's really what I should be doing. I'm making pizza. So. Uh, so this generates a bunch of what? Code, HTML code, right? So to see that code, you literally just go in here and grab it. And this creates a page called page one. See that? And I could take this page. This structure literally just creates one page, right? We have to hard code these references once we have them into two and three, right? And I'll show you how to do that in a second. So let's go uh, copy this code, right? Just control C. Go back to our page framework. And oh, let's go over here first. So we have the div called data roll page of page one. We're going to replace this div with that. See how that's analogous to that? It just calls it one instead of page one. That's fine for now. And we go bang. Show again how you put the, the, the bar to the button. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me show you that. Yeah. 
So uh, when you, I'll, I'll do that again. So if you click inspect code again, it's a toggle, right? Instead of hide code, it's inspect code. So let's add another button, right? We click on our widget, and it brings up our property panel, right? And you can see we have three buttons here, and you would click on new button. And that adds a new button. And so you put the text in, it's just called button. Right, but let's call it, uh, what would go here? Uh, uh, locations. How's that? And link to page, um, you know, that gives us a link back. So, uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. And all that does is create a new link in the structure, right? But the important point is how to wire it back up. It's actually pretty simple. So now we have an ID. This page actually has an ID at page one. We're going to go back and create a second page, and we're going to just call that page two instead of page one, and change the menu to say page two. Or we could do that now. Page two and page Right. So let's save that. Let's go uh, create a second page. So get rid of all this stuff. Re I'm just going to refresh this. So our second page will have another header. And what is it called? Uh, about us. And this page will have an image, right? Uh, image of Santa Rosa Junior College. Oops. Images. So let's take this image right here. That makes us look pretty good, huh? How do we get to this image? Come on. Copy image URL. And then we should be able to go right back here. Go here. Go there. And there's our image. Pretty cool, huh? And then we can put some text in here. So let's... How do you put content in? Here, content. Here is a heading. Our mission. And uh, actually, we could even, I'll show you how easy it is to uh, put a panel in, I mean, to put a collapsible panel in here, right? So here is a collapsible panel. The first section header will be, uh, you know, our mission. The second will be our history. And then we'll have a section of um, our great faculty. Okay? And then uh, once we bring that that structure into the HTML, we'll be able to add the content right in there. You know, it'll create that structure. Does that make sense? So, uh, and we could, we could actually delete this because it's redundant. Back. Uh, I have not added a second page. I'm building a new page, and then I'm going to take this HTML and plug it into the template. Oh, I reloaded the page. Yeah, I literally reloaded the page, so I got a fresh re Codica. I lost the first page, which doesn't make sense because I should have kept that menu. <laughs> Does that make sense? But I could plug that in there. Hey, watch this. 
I think you could even inspect the code. Watch, I think this might work. If I take this whole nav bar, right? If I take uh, this whole piece and copy it and go back to Codeca and put that nav bar right here. Uh, no, it won't let me edit it. Yeah, it won't let me edit it. That, that, that would be really cool. If you could place code, yeah, if you had a round trip, you know what I mean? But you don't do that. So that's fine. I could just copy this and then paste it in my HTML. You know, I, I still have to, all this is doing is it, just like Dreamweaver, you know? What, what essentially does Dreamweaver do? It just produces code. It can't do anything other than that. And that's all this is doing. It's just a nice interface that create, could create so if somebody knows that Dreamweaver does something else that I don't know. Where is the test at the top of the page build test? Where is the test? What, uh, well, let me ask, uh, what if you passed in into a new jQuery mobile site? And what if you paste into a a new jQuery mobile site. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand either of these questions. What? Cal's question, what is the test at the top of the page after you get done building your page? Right. Scroll up just a bit, not in the HTML, but in the, in the interface. Between built and right there. Yeah. Oh, the test. test is yeah. To test the functionality of the site. Yeah, I think that's just to, how does it look? Yeah. It kind of is like code view mode. Or live view mode in Dreamweaver. <laughs> yeah, it's like live view mode. Thanks. Sorry, I didn't understand. Does that, that should answer your question, Kelvin. Uh, Joe, I think you probably answered your own question. Or so, uh, but the point is, this is just creating code, and Codeca is just creating one page at a time literally one even virtual page. It can't create a multi-page site. So that's why I started with the multi-page template. Is it when you combine it with a that you can get? Uh, the, so I, I'm not an expert on Codeca, and the version of Codeca that's on the home page of jQuery Mobile is obviously just a demonstration, and I think there are paid versions of Codeca, but I'm not sure of their capabilities. But, you know, if you have Dreamweaver, you don't really need it to put it all together. And uh, what I've done a lot is just create, t take a, this multi-page template, and you could create a more sophisticated template, because almost all these sites have these same basic components, you know, about us, what are our products, where can you reach us, uh, and, and, you know, so your template could even be more sophisticated. In fact, what, what we could build right now is basically a template for a multi-page site. So, uh, but the point is, yes? Ah, it's so easy. That I'll show you again. I love all the questions. They're easy. So you just take this image thing and drag it where you want it to go. I don't want it to go in the header. And then it has a URL and I just, I just, I just took it off the internet. Yeah, I, I went to, I went to Google, found a halfway decent picture of the JC got its URL, and then I just went in here. Yeah, this is, yeah, it's not our building, I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> although it's pretty nice down here, so, uh, but that's all I did. I just literally got it off the internet. You might or might not want to do that based on, you know, copyright laws and things like that, but for demonstration purposes, it's as simple as that. I mean, that, that answers your question. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, and once you have that, and especially if it's a hard-coded uh, link like that, you can literally just copy this, and I am going to put this in uh, in my template to replace now page two, right? And again, 
you kind of have to be a little careful when you, you know, you guys know this already. 99% of web design is selecting the right, co you know, text in between your carrots and all that, right? <laughs> so, uh, and Dreamweaver gives you some pretty cool tools of doing that. So if you're within where your cursor is and you click this button, it'll give you, it'll select all the code, including the div that is wrapping where your cursor is, right? So uh, this is my page two from the template. I don't want it anymore, so I'm going to blow it away. And I'm going to paste the page two I created, and i got to remember to call it page two here, right? And other than that, and then all I have to do is take my nav from up here, and I'll show you another trick. Let's get rid of this. Uh, this is, well, it doesn't show here. Oh, forget about that trick. Right? So I'm just going to take this nav, which is going to be the same for all pages anyway, right? Copy it, and then and it goes right below the H3, which is the page title, which is right here. Bang. And now you can see how my collapsible thing works, right? So I think right under here I could just put some text. Our mission is to teach. We have been teaching for a hundred years. Our faculty is very old. How's that? <laughs> and theoretically, if it was as easy as just There we go. Okay, so this is our home page. This is a about us page. And we didn't really set this up. Oh, yeah, we did. We just, it doesn't look like we set it up exactly perfectly, or the bottom one opens by default, I think. Which might be something we could configure. In the, you know, we have to go back and look at the code. But you can see how the, the menu works right out of the box, right? We didn't, all we had to do is tell each menu item what div to open, what, I, what, you know, what the ID of the, of the div of the page that we wanted to show. And not only does it include the navigation, it, uh, it includes the effect, right? And I think it might even have, no, nope, it doesn't have the swipe in it yet. Okay, so um, let's build out the, the contact page and then we're done. So let's go to back to Kodika. And I, again, I'm just going to reload the page because there is no clear in this thing. And um, For this section, I am going to create a header, which is us. And I'm going to put a map in here. And this map could be Santa Rosa CA. What are we, 1301 Mendocino? I'm sorry? 1501? And uh, why are we still in Madison, Wisconsin? Oh, I see. Uh, that's the marker here. I'm going to do this. There we go. 
And our marker is, so let's make the zoom level 10, 12. How's that? That's pretty good, right? So all this will do at the end of the day is generate a image. Right, so you don't really get a live map. You just get a image, and that image is smart enough to be created just based on coordinates that are passed through that little property panel in that map widget of the jQuery mobile site, right? And I think it also gives you a, maybe not, uh, but it could give you a link, you know what I mean, to a Google Maps page that then, which you want to do, especially since most people use iPhones, you want to make sure that you link them to Google Maps, not just the generic maps on Apple, which will get them lost. And maybe even like floating in the bay or something like that, from what I hear. So uh, does that make sense? You can just put a link here that links to a map uh, that you can create a link from Google Maps directly that has a similar rendering, and then you get a live map link. Right? And I can show you how to do that in a second. So let's take this, or let's, no, we're not done with the page yet, so let's make it a little nicer. Let's uh, let's create uh, some content here. So what they used to have in this thing is like paragraphs, and they don't have those anymore. Lists. Yeah, but that's more of an input. And I don't know how to get to. Yeah, I mean, it's still just HTML, and uh, we could type it in. But I'm getting spoiled using this. So <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, that's. Uh, someone just woke us up in here. What is the time? Somebody's hand is up. There was something to the right. Yeah, no, uh, I saw that. I just had a hard time getting to it. So it's kind of a weird interface. Uh, but at this point, let's just take this map thing and bring it into the page. And then I want to show you how, you, how simple it is just to link it. So let's go back to our template. And this will become page three. And page three is, in this, we call it pop-up, right? We want to replace pop-up, which is that. And we want to call it, let's say, page three. And from here, we could literally go to uh, maps.google.com and get uh, Santa Rosa Look at that. It's the most searched 1501 Mendo in the world. So uh, let's take that and let's let's give them the traffic map, right? I mean, let's uh, give them the map map. Yep, yeah, that one. And turn traffic off. And then let's uh, click on this little link right here, and that'll give us a short URL to that specific map, right? And then we could just put that in an A tag. And wrap the image in that A tag. And then 
go back to our page and reload this. I think it wants me to put it on the server. And I go over here and I've got a image for my map, right? Which is not bad if you're on a phone, you know, it's pretty much what you need. But if you want to click through to Google Maps, it takes you right there. And if you, and if you have that installed, or, or even if you don't, the HTML5 Google Maps app is actually really cool. You know, it's it's sort of like a jQuery mobile type of interface. So you don't uh, you'll find even if you're looking at this on a smartphone, it will already be adapted to the smartphone. Does that make sense? Even though you're linking to another page, Google is ahead of us in creating responsive websites. <laughs> so, um, any questions? Uh, we just built like uh, so. Have we built the site? What else do we have to do? Yeah, literally, we pretty much built a you know three pager. How to find us? Who we are? What we have? In you know less than an hour, <laughs> without any idea knowing what we're what we're doing. You know, we just kind of put it together. So a uh, couple of things for deployment. Is there anything special that? for deployment purposes that a mobile site has or that a regular site doesn't? Not necessarily. I mean, it's all HTML5, CSS, JavaScript. There's the libraries, but the way we've implemented them, as you can see, the libraries are just being called in remotely, right? So now if we wanted to change our theme, right, would be a good, so if we go back to our page here, and you say, uh, that's cool, but I'm not paying 500 bucks for that. It's pretty ugly, you know. It's <laughs> so uh, what we would do is go back. We'd go, but no, we wouldn't take 300. We want to get that 500. So we go back to Theme Roller and spend 10 minutes with Theme Roller and charge them 200 bucks. That would be worth it, right? So uh, literally, we could put a custom font. What they want is a custom font. Let's say Helvetica. Uh, let's say they want. Um, this would be the header footer bar, right? And let's say we want the color to be more of a custom color. We would do something like, for that sake. There we go. All right. Well, that's the text color. All right. All right. So actually, that's pretty ugly, huh? <laughs> Make it a little lighter. Is that too dodgery for uh, Northern California? I think that's right. And uh, so this would be sort of the uh, selected and the unselected, I guess, part of it, or active and inactive. Um, let's change the text color to kind of map to that a little bit. So you can see the text input is changed, uh, and the text here is changed, just the basic paragraph text. Okay. Button, inactive button, you kind of go like that. Oops, we don't, definitely don't want that. In fact, we want them pretty white so they stand out against the gray background. Actually, that's not bad. All right. So then literally you could just download this theme roller, and I think what it'll do, you could name it, and I think this will give you all of the files, although uh, 
it might just give you the CSS. I think it gives you all of the library files zipped in with the CSS because it assumes you're starting from scratch. So then all you would do is take the, the, the other library files being the core and the jQuery mobile library, which we don't need because we're getting on the internet. Right? I don't think it'll give you, well, let's see. We'll name this try it out and we'll download the zip. And uh, if we go to my downloads, where's my try it out? Here it is. So I open the zip file. And in there is my, in, so it creates a whole site. What I really care about is this, right? So I want to copy, uh, let's see, I want to copy this. Uh, I think the images probably came, yeah, maybe, right? I'll copy this. Copy those. Go to my sites. Go to here. What do I call it? Mobile. And I could just go uh, paste it. Okay. Now I've got to go back to my code and just say whatever that file is called. Just put it right in here. And that file is called. Try it out that CSS. Oops. Try it out. I save this. I put try it out on the server. I put the images on the server. I don't really need to go to the server to do all this. The reason I am is uh, because I'm, why am I doing Because I'm dumb? Because uh, Dreamweaver is kind of dumb. Because they've set up this Dreamweaver site to be a testing server. So in order to do view in a browser, it, it like literally makes you put everything on the server. But it sort of assumes there's some server side thing, even though there's not. So uh, if I go back here and look at this site, which is right here, reload it. Oh, that's uh, here. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. So, so what that means is that uh, what? Yeah, I added a CSS that wasn't complete. Probably, it only gave me the styles that should overlay the basic styles, right? So that's really easy to fix, right? Let's go back here and uh, take this and copy it, right? Copy that. And then go Control Z. So that's back there. And under it, I'm going to put this. And then if I put that up there, cool. Does everyone understand what I did? So. Uh, when you use Theme Roller, it used to give you the everything, uh, but maybe just either the button I clicked or the way it, maybe it's been updated, but it just gives you what you themed. Uh, to override, it just creates a, a zip file which includes a CSS file which contains only the styles that you've changed. So, you, so it doesn't create a whole new Theme Roller CSS. It creates a net new theme roller CSS, right? Well, it's good that we went through that because we all learned. Try it out. So we call this CSS, try it out. So uh, it's a good thing we tried it out. You guys would have got home and say, that guy it's taught me the wrong way. So one of the things is we didn't put our navigator in here, right? So that's pretty simple to fix. 
we just take our nav and copy it and then right here under mission uh, actually I think we want it this is page two page three we want it right here okay so uh, let's add something uh, let's add the swipe event does that make sense do, do we have a swipe event by default does anyone know what the swipe event is yeah yep. for those of you who have a touch screen device swiping is the new clicking in a way you know uh, people expect to be able to swipe right uh, to get from page to page sometimes people just want to go swipe you know uh, and a well-designed mobile site should allow them to do that. Sort of like our website. You see that I've implemented the jQuery mobile event on our website. So as you swipe right, you go back a page, because going to the right is like, you know, pushing the page to the, whatever it's called, the obverse side. And then as you swipe to the left, you advance a virtual page, right? So am I really swiping? Am I putting my finger on this? So uh, jQuery Mobile not only has uh, a swipe, it has sort of a V swipe, a swipe that also responds to a mouse swipe on a non-touch uh, screen. For those of us who haven't bought a convertible touchscreen laptop yet, right? And that's what I'm doing here. And it's good to use that because even in this environment, people might start getting used to this swipe, number one. Number two is it's good to capture it because all websites do it by default and it drives me crazy, you know, because the back is kind of <laughs> driven by it. So anyway, sorry. So, uh, so how do you implement swipe? So let's go to the jQuery mobile website, look at the API, Look at events. And there's swipe left and swipe right. All right? And I think that there's a yep, swipe left and swipe right. So uh, I think it's as easy as grabbing this. Versus uh, because we want to distinguish between those two. Right? Does that make sense? So uh, if we choose the swipe event, I don't think it could distinguish between the two. It doesn't know whether you're going left or right. Uh, in most web applications, so it really depends on what you're trying to do. So what I'm trying to do is uh, when you're on page one and you swipe left, don't uh, go to the next page. When you swipe right, don't do anything. When you're on page two, when you swipe left, go to page three, and you swipe right, go to page two, right? So you, that's why I'm, I'm using the swipe left, swipe right events, because I need to distinguish between them, right? So let's just, at this point, implement it on one page, page two, okay? So uh, how would we do that? Let's, uh, well, the first thing we'd need to do is create J, a jQuery environment, right? <laughs> So uh, that's a script, all right? So um, let's create a new file, which is going to be a JavaScript file. Let's save it as uh, mobile.js. Just you can name it whatever you want, but I'll call it mobile. 
And then in here, <coughs> excuse me, like we've done with these, let's bring that script file now into our page document. And all we have to do here is replace that. All right. So now any code we place in this file is now virtually part of that page. Does that make sense? That should be pretty straightforward. And to activate jQuery uh, at the right time, we're going to do uh, document dot ready function. And this is sort of boilerplate code that we went over a couple of weeks ago to ensure that everything that runs in here runs once the whole page has been loaded into the memory of the browser. And in this case, it'll include all pages, right? Because all the pages are in that document. They're all within one body of one HTML document, <laughs> right? So, uh, and here we're going to say, when this whole thing loads, let's go, t let's take, uh, page two, and, uh, when we go to page two and do a swipe left, I think that's the event. Run this function. Semicolon. Right? And what we what that function all it needs to do is to navigate to page one. Does that make sense? So how do we navigate from page to page? Let's see how it does it in here. Uh, that's not what we want. Uh, events. Okay. So I don't think we want navigate. Uh, because we're not navigating. The event is the swipe. The result, the action that we want is to navigate. And all they were showing you there was ways to respond to the swipe, but not object. Yeah, exactly. So uh, here, let's do uh, jQuery mobile uh, multi page. Uh, Navigation event. Uh, remember, we use semantics. We created the navigation in those menus by using href and referring to the ID. And jQuery Mobile was able to put that together together to do navigation. But now we want to do it programmatically. So we uh, and we have to figure out how to do that. So let's see scripting pages. The Ajax navigation model. Change page. Here it is. Pretty simple. So now let's go back to our code. And we want to, and how does change page work? Here, just like this. So you pass up the page you want to move to, I believe. Uh, and let's see if that'll work on a multi-page. So, uh, well, let's see. Right? So what we're saying is if you go, if you swipe left, you actually want to go to three. Yeah. And if you swipe right, you want to go to one. And then we save this, put that on our site, 
make sure that our index is updated on the site so that it has to refer to that. And go back to this page. Update it. Go to page two and doesn't work. All right. So uh, first, let's see if we're getting an error. We are getting a JavaScript error. So object has no method swipe left. So what that means let's take a look. Triggered when it uh, select uh, on okay. So sorry about that. Slightly different syntax in implementing the events in jQuery than in so swipe left is not really a function, it's implemented as an event. So you can't really pass it as a function like you can click. Click's kind of a shortcut <laughs> in jQuery core. You know how we've used click a lot in jQuery core as an event? It's a function that listens for an event inherently. There is no swipe left function. It's just implemented as an event. So we have to change our syntax a little bit. We have to say on and then the swipe left event. And when that happens, run this function. Right? <laughs> and it's the same thing here, I think. So uh, the on event in jQuery is, an, is, is sort of a generic event handler. You could pass in the event to listen for as the first argument, and then pass the event handler function as the second argument. Does that make sense? And that's the way we would use uh, swipe left and swipe right. So let's see if this will work. We go back to this page. We reload it. We we're not getting an error, but it's not doing anything. You might be right. So let's go uh, back here. Uh, where is it? Back here. Swipe. Uh, where is it? Alright. I think it doesn't matter. Reload this. Hey. Well, we don't have the swipe event on here. So we have to go back. If we swipe left, we go forward, which makes sense. If we go back here and swipe right, we go backward, which makes sense. Does that make sense? <laughs> so uh, I didn't implement this. I'd have to. Imp so here, let, let's go back and do it the right way, right? So page two, we want this to happen. For page one, if we swipe left, if we want to go to page two, if we swipe right, we don't want anything, right? Return default, which will say, don't do a thing. Uh, well, let me just return, right? And this has to be for one, right? And then for page three, this will be. Three, when you go forward, don't do anything. Just return control. Uh, but if you do, go forward, I mean, go back, go to page two, which is right here. And this should give us all our slight navigation, theoretically. Right? So 
Let's see if it works. So we're on page one. We could go back and forth. If we do two swipes, it takes us all the way there. If the swipes are counterintuitive, think of physics, you know? When you swipe to the left, you're actually pushing the page out of the way and going forward. So, Tony, you have a question? No, uh, when I wrote return, uh, it really doesn't probably do anything in this case, but it's saying, it's a good way of saying, don't do anything. It's a good way of creating a null function. And what it really is saying is return control back to whatever called this function. So what this is saying is, when you swipe right, don't do anything. Go back to what you were doing before this function was asked to run. This function was asked to run because somebody tried to swipe something that we don't want it to take an effect. Does that make sense? But it doesn't mean reload the page or refresh the page. It just really, it's, a, it's a JavaScript term for return the, the statement flow back to whatever statement called this function. In this case, it's probably not. Yeah. Uh, here, let's, uh, I mean, we could do anything. We could have it like flash green, you know. <laughs> or give some kind of feedback, you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if we take it out, I don't think it'll have an effect, to be honest. Other than it crashes the whole site. But there we go. Okay, so uh, if I'm on page one now and I go back, it, it's still it's the same behavior. I think. So now we've built a swipeable mobile site in less than probably 45 minutes uh, using basic jQuery stuff that should be somewhat familiar to you, right? How to create a JavaScript file, how to refer to page. So let's take a, a deeper look at this real quick. Uh, what are these things? Uh, each one is a jQuery statement. Uh, in this first statement, they're all pretty much the same. Right? They're all event handlers. They handle two different types of events, swipe lefts and swipe rights. In all cases, there is a selector. What is being swiped? And the best thing to select to wait for that swipe control is the whole page. Because you don't know, you know, they might swipe anywhere on that page. Right, but that when that page is shown, that is essentially the viewport of that page. Okay. There, is, all the other elements on the page don't display. What, it, what displays at any one point in time is only what's within one of those pages that we pasted from Codica. Does that make sense? All the other parts were structure that aren't visual elements. Right. So by putting it at that level. If that wrapper, you're, you're guaranteed to get everything on the page. Now that could be, there could be pros and cons to that. What if you have a menu that uh, you want to be touch enabled? The swipe might be sometimes misconstrued for a touch, or a touch could be misconstrued for a swipe. You know what I mean? Yeah, so there are ways of doing that. Uh, setting sensitivity as to angles, what's left and what's right, things like that. Uh, and Maybe selecting swipe just on the body and not on the menu. So how is that specific to find if you do not use the Yeah, it's very so that's a good question. Man. That is a great question. jQuery bind. So we're going to look at the documentation for jQuery bind, and then jQuery on. So jQuery on, attach an event handler function for one or more events to the selected elements, OK? jQuery bind, attach a handler to an event for the elements. <laughs> so. They look very similar. Right? In fact, what? 
As of jQuery 1.7, the on method is the preferred method for attaching event handlers to a document. For earlier versions, the bind method is used for attaching an event handler directly to elements. So uh, I taught you, so this is a good example. Last year, it was all about, I mean, last year when Irene took this JavaScript, not this class, but the JavaScript class, it was all about bind. Now binding is, yep, just like, just like in China, binding is now politically incorrect. And, and, we're, and we're using the on. But, uh, and then as we move forward, as jQuery and the DOM, where are our events implemented? All these events, where are they implemented? In jQuery, in, in the DOM, in the document object model. And as that gets smarter, uh, and as jQuery and other tools for working with the DOM get smarter, uh, there will be better ways of working with them. Events in jQuery are great, but they're not perfect. Uh, uh, delegation, or the ability to sort of uh, take better advantage of event propagation is something that developers are all trying to get to. And you can see the event models evolve. Uh, you know, not every month, but I'd say every year or two at this point. And even since I've taught the, J, the JavaScript class just, you know, whatever it was, six months ago, uh, for those of you who took it, remember, the last class was sort of what's coming in jQuery, and I mean in JavaScript, and a lot of that is now sort of standard. So, uh, but, yeah, what's here. So this is a good example of that. And it's also a good example of why you'd have to sort of depend on the documentation. Because, you know, even the smartest instructor can't be expected to, you know, <laughs> remember all of, you know, the current status and which came first and which is the current way of doing things. So that's why whenever you ask me a question, what do I do? I go to Google. <laughs> so um, let's see if there's any online questions as I ask. There we go. Where is my little button here? Swipe left. So, uh, so somebody found a problem with our code. So let's see if we have that problem. On page three, swipe left does not go to page two. I could have sworn I saw it working. So, and look at how cool this is. Not only, uh, look at that, when you load a page, it actually changes the title. Of the page. That's pretty cool. Uh, but uh, to answer Carol's question, so now I'm on page three, and if I swipe left, it should not do anything because there's no page four. If I swipe right, it does take me to page two. So, and the code looks like that for page three. So you might not have got it exactly like we have it, but it seems to work for me. Oh, swipe right does not go to page one. That's right. So my stated behavior was, if you're on the last page, don't go back. Just don't do anything, which is a decision. Maybe Cal's got a better feature. You know, when you go to the last page and you swipe right, go to back to the first page. So maybe his app will get more downloads on the App Store. But, uh, but I chose not to do that, and that's why it behaved that way. Uh, first, I put the return, and then there was a question like that. So the return really wasn't doing anything functional, so I took it away, and it's the same behavior. Yeah. If I didn't put it in, there'd be no, what do you think would happen? There would no, be no event handler, so probably nothing would happen. Just to test it, let's put this back up. Now, what do I have to do? I have to refresh the page, right? Because there could be. Yep, the behavior is pretty much the same. And I could swipe anywhere on the page. Right? So, uh, this isn't exhaustive, 
you know, there's a lot more you could do with jQuery Mobile, uh, and there's a lot more widgets you can explore. And Codeca is not a part of it. It's just a nice, nifty little tool that happens to be on their page. Does that make sense? Uh, it has nothing to do with jQuery Mobile, other than it's a it, it's a nice tool that happened to be there, and it and it does implement their widgets directly when you use it on that page. You know what I mean? It does know what a jQuery Mobile collapsible is, for example. So it does make it really easy to build things up. Like I said, Dreamweaver has this too. I think what you have to do is install the jQuery mobile plugin for Dreamweaver. And then I think you get a panel that looks a little bit like the Codeca panel, panels for jQuery mobile widgets. Right? So that's another direction we could go in. I think you need CS6 for that. But. So, uh, but the point is, like I said, WordPress, uh, anything, I challenge you to build, you know, a, a three-page site <laughs> uh, that quickly. You know, just with those tools that are there. That not only works, but it works pretty well on mobile devices, you know, which is sort of more and more what people are looking at websites on. So uh, at this point, we'll take a break for 10 minutes. And then we're kind of freeform lag. So we haven't tried this before. But uh, whether you're home listening or whether you're here in the class, I guess we'll just be open for questions or can you look at my page or whatever. Uh, if you're listening to the recording, you might not want to ask a question. <laughs> but that's probably more of a joke than anything. So uh, we'll come back in uh, at 10 to you. And I am going to pause the recording. More noise than we actually couldn't call with that bell. Right? And if anybody has at home wants to like post a question and give us a link, I could take a step through your code if you want. Uh, if you don't have that, you just want to sit uh, through the session and listen to or try to listen to what we're talking about in class, that would probably be fine. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to help some people that are in the class. Um, so hopefully you can still hear me. Uh, in the HTML platform. Or, oh, this class? Uh, so we'll do a similar thing. We'll do like the first half, we'll do work for that, and then we'll do a thing. No, uh, we'll do a basic site. So I, I need a site. So if you want to follow along, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, so you need a site to work on. You can solve work for some of the JC's. You make it have yeah, you have, yeah. Yeah, well, that would be on here. Or you can have it on um, Sonic or Blue Hostel. That's right. You can do that. Oh, yeah. You can use, you know, something like that. For WordPress, you just can't put on the screen. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, so good question. So WordPress, uh, what your site looks like is kind of not theme. What most people do is start with an existing theme and uh, and build a trial theme. So I was going to let's focus on the theme then. How do you create a trial theme? What is a trial theme? What is it? <laughs> yeah, kind of have it all fits together. More than so we'll probably do less tutorial than more than exploration. And not like this where we actually do something. In WordPress, uh, it's a little harder to do that because there's a lot of new effects. So we're just going to kind of uh, take a look at it in WordPress. So see how it's uh, and maybe create a child. And, uh, the other problem is I kind of need a lot of smart because 
And then there'll be one, yeah, and then there'll be one more lesson after that. So, you know, hopefully in an hour and a half we'll be as much of more persons as we can. Yeah. If you want to kind of follow along. Well, that's, this is the, this is the GPS. Yeah. 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 So Bootstrap itself was based on something called OBS. Yeah, so, so all the grid stuff. And there's even things that are based on OBS. Yeah. So yeah. so yeah. yeah. In fact, there's even a less I think this is a good job. It's kind of a good way to do it. So, I'm going to use the good job. It's kind of a good way to pull it out. Yeah. In this case, I used to subscribe to the theme on the board. I'm going to do it. 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 More sophisticated than the uh, uh, and people will say it's, it's more important. Uh, I would say this. Um, you know, it's 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 on, uh, in WordPress, you have to type them and play them on. There isn't a lot of people who are ever uh, touching it. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. And there's tons of modules that you can Yeah, I can do And basically, it's a head of control of the needs that you're going to do. So instead of creating a block, you actually could create uh, something that makes sense for business, like an order or a customer. Uh, so it's more like a database than a traditional CMS. And then you can um, actually relate these things together, just like you can. It's almost more like what we did in this class for building a database generated website. Because it allows you to just to make a blog post, which is stored in a database in our press, you can actually say this is and give it characteristics. Locations. You know, if you store locations, you can actually create an entity called Locations and give them an address. Well, we didn't use Drupal. Uh, no, 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 no. No, we didn't. What do you mean? Oh, but that was not for the class. That was the. Yeah, this class is very similar. This PhD class is very similar. We had a different example. Uh, uh, this year we used this my team's example. I'm not sure if you can Last year we used this thing called uh, a subscribe to the newsletter. I did a Okay, so we really just uh, we had a good job. Jake Curry is not being worked. So <laughs> so let's go back to that area and see where the area where the shows are. So it's uh you know, it's so weird. But it's then like No, that's not last year in your code. So go back to the browser. So it's it's line three of the J query code. Oh, that's your thing. Okay. Um, so what, what did you call this? Let's go. Um, this is a... Uh, but it's running... Oh, it's running with this. Yeah, that's cool. So, uh, let's see what we'll get. What could I? See so let's go back to console. Oh, it's not coming in this page. Yeah, those are the images that uh, I put those images. Uh, so you need that images folder? Oh. That's what those are. But that's, that first error is worse. So open it up. Uh, to the mm -hmm. so, so, are you like, and are you so go back to your phone? Are you loading it before? Um, so, that's the yeah, that's your phone. So, look at this. That means to come after you. 
You know, does, does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't know what Jake Curry is. So, your mode, your the mode, your mode, your mode, your mode, your mode, So they absorbed it a bit, and I thought there was some way to get to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah sorry, there was another guy named Tony. <laughs> For a while. Uh, oh, yeah, because you had your own computer, so it'd be different, right? Yeah, and I'm on. Uh, well, maybe not. Let's see. I think I think the instructor is different than the student oh, okay. for whatever reason. So if I could get to my student can I? See I can't even get to my, oh yeah, I can. Alright, so uh let's get out of here. So you still log into the same host though, right? Is it student.sanders.edu? Yeah. I I I have an account on student So uh It's D B E A U C H A. Oh, I I know another problem is this should just be that, right? Without the admin. Yeah, for the schema, yeah. Okay. That's how much. And then it is P G or six. Yeah, yeah, it's capital capital G, lowercase G. 6H, H, capital H, that is. Mm -hmm. uh, capital B, TV. Okay. So, yeah, so I could connect. Really? Okay. Uh, and I, I'm pretty sure, crazy as it sounds, <laughs> that it's just a network thing. They, they lock out 3306 for students. Why would I do that? Because uh, this is a, um, a learning lab for computer students. Yeah, I know. It's pretty stupid. Uh, you could get to it over FTP, I mean over Wi-Fi maybe. Yeah. But that doesn't help you. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I was just going to have you take a look at my... Um, yeah, if you want me to, I can do it from here. You can do it here. Yeah. 
So, uh, what I wanted to do with mine is basically kind of keep what we have, so just the same four blues, and, and, and but, you know maybe do something different. I haven't figured out what I want to, do, but I want to have one page on my um, off a portfolio site. I'm doing the HTML. Right. Mm -hmm. But I want to have one page where um, I kind of like. Um, have a list of products for basically looks like an e-commerce kind of thing. It looks like it won't be a full one, but it'll just be like a list of products and their prices and all the different categories of things. And mm -hmm. customers can come and look at the different stuff and see mm -hmm. categories and look at pictures and stuff. Like that. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of want to have that implemented into uh, the bootstrap side I have. So right. I was wondering how um, if I use this this setup that we already have that you've already got. Oh, yeah. So you, so you could have, uh, you might not need to use all four tiers, mm -hmm. but you might be able to use three tiers. Uh, and you, you could just create a taxonomy that is a multi-level taxonomy. Does that make sense? So let's say you have, um, uh, what am I trying to, uh, you could have, uh, <laughs> You can have one table that's, you know, I'm trying not to think of how you want to do that. Um, like a clothing retail. Yeah. Uh, you have men's department and a women's department. Yeah. And then within a men's department, you might have casual, you know, you might have formal, whatever. Right? Or, yeah, shirts and pants and shoes. Right, right. So, uh, so, uh, you're, you're, so you have a product table, and then you have two category tables. You know, you have. This is called taxonomy. Okay. Basically, you know, see the uh, taxonomy one, taxonomy two, and then you have products. And so these are columns in your product table. And taxonomy one might be, uh, you know, um, uh, not gender, but uh, customer type. You know, kid, uh, uh, adult man, you know, men, women, child, young adult, adult, whatever. And then uh, taxonomy two could be, you know, formal. Uh, vacation, you know, when you would want to wear it. So, who and when, and each of these could be a here, and this could be, um, you know, your product. So, this would be, you know, shirt number, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and, and you could have one, you could have, uh, you could, you could set up something as one to many, you know. So, it, so this one shirt could be for men and all women, and it could be for formal or casual or whatever. Okay. And how would you, how would you do, do that? You would have to. Uh, so basically, it's kind of the same way we have it set up. What I have is you want to set up the database because it starts at the top level of the genres. The top level I can have here would be. You could do it that way, but it would be much more exclusive. You know what I mean? So what does that mean? Um, See, this is a little, you know, the music application is a little different. It is a little uh, members. A track doesn't exist outside of that album. Oh, yeah. here, this shirt is just categorized as a men. Oh, okay. But even yeah. itself is its own entity. Yeah. Right? yeah. So you're just using this as a way of taxonomizing what these things How does that change the way it's programmed then? Well, it would change them a lot because uh, this end is just not a child of its parent. It's sort of like a cross matrix of all the things that fit in this territory and all the things that fit in the And that's why I'm trying to go through this with you. It's, it's a different model. It, it yeah. might look the same yeah. at first, but it really isn't a master detail. So there's a lot more that goes into this because everything is separate. Yeah, everything is a lot more open ended. Yeah. You know, you have, you have all these things. So if you're trying to do a product in place, uh, unless it's a specialized product that is uh, hierarchical in its nature, it's, it's going to be harder to model. And if products by their nature 
Uh, I wonder how a lot of people have been more open in there. Yeah. You know, they have sizes and they have so. Sizes. Would it be easier to narrow it down to say, like, car versus standard car manufacturer? That would be good. A yeah. model like those. Or, 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 or you know, a hierarchical structure fits a lot of patterns. It just doesn't fit products very easily because we don't create products hierarchical. Yeah. But cars would be a good example uh, where we're really uh, literally categorizing. Um, you know, uh, players on teams. Okay. And then you have a lead, you have a team, you have a player. Yeah. So you can ask, you know, you can ask questions. So in the hierarchy of structure, you can ask questions not only of who has the highest batting average on, on this team, you can ask who has the highest batting average on this lead, who has the highest batting average across all the leagues. You know what I mean? Because it's a hierarchy of structure. And, you know, uh, and so that way you would say, you know, uh, I have a lead table, and that has an American and a national row. And then I have a a uh, team table, and a team has to belong to either American or national, okay? and then a player has to belong to a team. And that's very similar to the music structure. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, it will make sense. Okay. So okay. Can play with it to yeah. figure that out. So that's just one. Another one, as opposed to products, will be orders. Orders are very hierarchical. You know, order, and then you have items for that order, and even within items, you might have components, right? Yeah. So uh, I, I made an order in Apple. That's order, you know, number one, two, three, right? That order included one Mac, iMac, and one iPhone, right? So that is a one-to-many relationship that's very hierarchical. Those things don't belong to another order; they belong to this order, right? And then the iMac came with an you know, AC adapter, uh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> so what are the components of that product that actually have to ship? Okay. In, you know what I mean? That might be another application. Yeah, that's actually and, a good application. And, and that applies, to use that. Yeah, and that applies the product concept, but by putting it in the context of an order, uh, it, 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 it makes it a little simpler to visualize a hierarchical structure. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. See you guys. Okay. And, and uh, Shannon, let me know about that. Because um, if you're not going to follow up for whatever reason, I still want somebody to help them. So, if you guys want to work that out, I'm okay with it. I trust. Oh, okay. That's good. All right. Okay. All right. Excuse me. Is anybody interested in a full-time position? Uh, in Santa Rosa? Yeah. It's a, for me, but it's uh, a company I know that uh, might not be a best fit, but it's, uh, it's pure web work. And you can learn a ton in Santa Rosa. It's uh, a little bit of SEO. Is that travel agency thing you're talking about? Google Analytics thing? Uh, yeah, but it's not for a travel agent. Oh. It's for uh, SEO, for... Uh, I don't want to be too brief. Let me finish Monday and then. Yeah. Yeah, that is just a project thing. You uh, know, what I mean, those days. I was thinking it might be different person. Oh, you guys work there? Yeah. Yeah, you're person one. But I was going to ask you the general issue to getting the. Because I'm a project manager. I wanted to know more about the experience. I really want this stuff. If you, like, here. Do you want to make a career change? Or do you no, know? I this my career. Right, right, right. And I still like doing it. I'm so cold, so I want to stir that. Right, yeah. There's no career change right now. Yeah, no, it's a perfect Yeah. I don't know, I kind of like there are a lot of most of the still in the city. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, uh, yeah, but more and more you could do them. Uh, you know, like you're doing a consulting Yeah. In fact, that is a great consulting I just have to find that you'd be able to do a little travel. Yeah, well, um, the whole travel is kind of hard mm -hmm. so. yeah, yeah, I have a friend who, uh, I haven't talked to her in a long time, but she was doing that PGE for like, Twenty years and she's been doing for Just doing the same project. How I did this. I'm doing consulting. Yeah. As a you know, as a consultant. 
But they also have in-house people. Yeah, yeah. Are you the in-house people or kind of like consultants? Yeah, they're like yeah. IT people that consult on the project. Exactly. You have to be someone. Yeah. I'm Okay. How long do you need of those guys on Monday? Okay. And the side of the DIS to do that. Okay. And then uh, we'll talk on Wednesday. I'm going to meet with them on Wednesday also. Okay. Those guys are good. Oh, you're right. Yeah. It's not just the answer. Any questions? <laughs> you don't have to. Any questions at home? Come on. You know, uh, I, I thought of some things that would be so, would be a, a big benefit that you could do that would be really easy. Okay, tell me. Convince me. Uh, <laughs> uh, it wouldn't take a lot of creativity, but it would be kind of fun and very useful. You could take uh, either the project that we did, that MyTune thing, okay. or the one that we did last year. And sort of clean it up and make it a really good tutorial. You know, so uh, just step through it. What? How do you do it? Like, I, you know how I did the mix yeah, steps, yeah. but actually, like, explaining it in more detail, right. commenting the code, um, uh, you know, just simple things like that would be helpful. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, not really even expanding the functionality. Oh, yeah, clean it up, clean it to JS land. Oh, Because <laughs> then it would be working for some of the jurors and also the No. Like I said, it's not a sexy time. Oh, I can't remember. I was going to do that. 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 I think your project that you did was great. I think that's the big, the uh, the first show project. I think that's a good idea. Oh, uh, no, because I was looking at that and I'm like, there's no category these things do. I think it's well. There is. It's a great category. I think I just want to do a basic so, uh, she had it even. I know. So, so I was just talking to David about it, products are a little bit trickier. They're harder to think of. For whatever reason, we don't think of products are You know what I mean? Uh, they're more tangential. So, uh, uh, an order is hierarchical. You know, you place one order, it includes products, right. which might include you know, additional things or whatever. But a product itself, like a shirt, isn't part of a hierarchy. It's not typically yeah. part of a suit. You know what I mean? And it, so it, I mean, it has tangents. It has colors. It has sizes. It has applications that can get from men or women or, you know, or formal. I'm not getting myself in trouble with that trying to get through. That's what I'm saying. So uh, we just want to do this. Trying to model products is one of the hardest things in building business applications. Because every company kind of does their core thing is their products. And they how they you know, categorize them and all that is the heart of their business. And it's typically not hierarchical. It's yeah. more taxonomical. <laughs> does that make sense? Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, taxonomical is more like it, it can fit categories, but it's not defined necessarily by any one category that it fits. Right, exactly. As opposed to another good example of a hierarchical structure is uh, species. You know, uh, every animal belongs to one species, every species belongs to one genus, every genus belongs to one family. Yeah, so that's a very, so if you're going to do like a bird watching application of these or something like that. You know what I mean? Because you can literally, there's a hierarchy of birds. You know, a bird species is either one of these families, either an owl or a pelican or whatever. And, uh, and there's information at every one level. You know what I mean? All owls are nocturnal. 
But shorter than it always looked like this, it's supposed to last. But now, if you were doing some session, you'd say, this is not proper. No, no. It's still going to be good. Depends on how you're looking at it. If you're looking at uh, fruits and vegetables from a biological level, a tangerine is a citrus, right. which is a fruit from a tree, which is not that far apart. If you're looking at it from what goes good in the salad or whatever, right. that's, that's, that's a little different. You know what I mean? So, uh, does that make sense? Yeah. Well, the other thing I was thinking about is my daughter's having terrible problems with AP urine, but I don't think I have enough time for she does. AP urine. I don't think you can do something like that where she can pull questions off and scrap the questions. There you go. Yeah. But, that, but, but making that part of the article is tough. And making it a whole other thing. That is hard to do with my article. Yeah. 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 So, 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 uh, it's not necessary that what you do inside an article, you know what I mean? But the my change example is a good place to start, and that is side article. So it, it would make things easier. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, because I think the hardest part of the topic is the basic concept. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so the basic concept is you set up, exactly, you set up the database, you kind of try to figure out what you want it to look like on the page, right. and then you spend a lot of time wiring it together. Yeah. Uh, and, that's, and that's what we did in this, uh, you know, in my case, like, first we created the database, then we got all the data out of the database, put it on the page, and then we figured out how we wanted it on the page. Then we figured out what interactions we wanted and wired those together. How many weeks do we have? Uh, three or four. Oh, four. <laughs> Four. Yeah, yeah, three, three, three weeks, but some, yeah. Four from Sunday, exactly. Yeah. I told you four. No, on the last day of the prison. No, we eat. We eat. Yeah, we eat. And we might look at the, you know, inside, like, uh, look at the... No, we used to have the world out and talk. We used to have the concept of the gender and the gender. And on the last day, we had a cater, and we would see everybody. Yeah. It was a lot of fun to Irish. <laughs> Nobody wants to, I don't know if people show up. You know, yeah, there's, no there's not as much story. Well, no, it's, it's, yeah, not as much as that. Yeah, it's, it's not as much as that. Yeah, it's not as much as that. But this course is teaching us much more technical stuff than I can teach. So, yeah. 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 So I'm able to grab a, a, a GPS file that I acquired and tell the mapping mapping where approximately where it is and plot it. So that's so that's sort of the, that's what I want to be able to display. Yeah. Um, so in here, I mean, here's where the data which is just a plot of separate text file. So what I'm trying to figure out is where and since it's just a text file, I'll add, I can have a certain work on my database and I'll get some of this. And it's a text file. Oh, so you want that text file to be how many days? Yeah, I want to fetch that out of the database. I'm not really sure if it is. So I'll take the text file. It's just a set of land table for the points. Yes, but well, what it looks like is a yeah. Uh, so it's a all of these are within a segment. So does it go? Does it actually draw a? Like if you go to the right hand now. Is it a polygon or it actually creates a... You know, I'm not sure that the um, 
Well, it's what it's doing. It's sucking it in and then it's where uh, these open layers <laughs> soft <laughs> 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 so what I would, so, so here's what you can do. Uh, you can write a piece of paper to you that generates an XML. You know, so, uh, you, know you would uh, open up that text file again. <laughs> You know, that's a very structured thing to create. So what you would do is create a database that has a row for each of these in some kind of order. You know, and, then, uh, and then you would do select you know, from that table and produce all these rows. It's like what you do. Every time you hit one of these rows, you just wrap it in and use tags. Just kind of like we do. Uh, if you go up here, I'll show you. Well, I guess my question, part of the thing I'm not quite sure what to do about is that. Well, maybe I'd have to look and see if the, the, the layers people have another way of building effects. Because right now, this is in a text file. My thought was I could. I could Put the text. I could put the text so right into the database and then just post my app. Yeah, so you would, instead of giving it a flat file, you would give it a, a PHP file that produces something that looks just like that. Thing. But it does it dynamically. Does that make sense? Yeah. So you would produce, so instead of linking to this, you link to something that is .php. And yeah, the, 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 the .php program would basically echo that that whole structure that gets all the data. And then that PHP, it could do it dynamic, it could do it as well. It could do it as a database, get a row, that row includes a latitude and longitude, pull that information back and insert it into that page and go to the next And we have to kind of, you know, we've done that. Uh, we've done that in, when we got that music here, you know. Uh, so you don't really have a hard RPG, you just have an Anadel and a bunch of points. Well, what I'm going to have eventually, that was a sample. What I really will have is a bunch of different GPX files. And each one of your is a point. Right. Yeah, so this is great. Then you would click on, you know, then, I'll, then the interface will show like this stuff. Yeah. It'll, it'll look into the app of the database, what are the names of all the rails. Mm -hmm. And then you pop the button, and then you click on it, and then So you really got a very simple, uh, you know, uh, trail, table, and uh, points, right? And but the points have to be in order to do a real trail, right? you know what I mean? Well, really, they don't draw how they look at the person, you know what I mean? Uh, so the kernel will be here, let's say, uh, 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 one or whatever, uh, 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 ridge. <laughs> and, and that would be a trail. And then this would, that would be trail one, let's say. And then trail one might have point one, point two, point three. And this would be, you know, 42, blah, 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 blah you know, latitude and longitude. Latitude and longitude for trail by point. And then you would say, uh, when you try to duplicate that XML file, you're creating it virtually dynamically, you would say select order from points, order by trail, and then order by sequence. And then it would go from point to point to point to order by trail. And that would just imply on a Python graph and then do it by hand? Well, it's in a text file. Yes, you have to get it. Yeah. I'll get it. Uh, to get it in the database? No, no, no. Uh, well, it's up to. Well, I have to figure out a way to do that anyway. Is there, is there any way that you can save that text file as a column summary of CPS? Yeah, because you could upload it if possible. Because I didn't need to do that. I, mean, I would eventually want to do that. The best way to do it in Dreamweaver is like to. Like a bot file on your drive. If you're fine to replace in Dreamweaver, to just. To insert into and then you know what you can see when you have these in files, 
So you can replace the threads with SQL. You know, one way or the other. Are you going to find the replace? Can we use for finding the data and the pictures and stuff that you're going to have on the internet? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah, you just want to create the data. But wouldn't it be copies of these? Not for class. I mean, you know, I thought the Mary was going to check them. Right, and that was true. They had Mary yeah, but this should be really a yeah, I can't use that as an excuse. But I, I know they're attorneys. So they'll do that with one semester. Yeah, or Grateful Dead. Yeah. Well, they're smart. Oh, yeah. But they're, but they're so. Exactly. But part of it is uh, to manufacture uh, some data. And it doesn't go overboard. You know? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Figure it out. Here, let's do it. Uh, let's look at tracks here. So tracks have three columns, right? Right. So if I do, and it needs, if I do uh, insert into tracks, Uh, insert into tracks ID tracks albums ID albums track track right values and this could be you know it's got to be higher than so it should be like 35 right mm -hmm. actually um uh, you got higher than your last one. Yeah, so let's just do 31. Uh, what the hell? Oh, yeah. 31, and I could put it into album one, and I don't want to give it a title. So if I just go like that, what happens? Yeah, you have an error. Uh, so it doesn't like. Uh, 
Yeah. Doesn't like this. So let's see what happens. It's not going to like this either. So. But if I go uh, now, it'll take that. So I have to put null in there. Perfect. Yeah. Or, or you could put like, you know, like that. The double quotes is going to work? And then it'll work. It just kind of okay, duplicate. Okay. So either the double quotes or the null. Yeah. Yep. And they'll both give you a null. Okay. So that's where I'll start. And then the transition into the actual. Letters. I'll just figure out. I just screwed up this guy's database here. <laughs> I thought it was a knife. Yeah. What did you just end up doing? Well, it wasn't my database I was playing around. It was a student's database. Well, doesn't, what are you in, you're not in code, are you? You're in, I'm in code. I was in uh, MySQL Workbench. So then when you close my SQL workbench, doesn't it ask you if you want to actually apply it? <laughs> uh, well, not if I type in insert. It applies it automatically. Oh. So, but I, I delete it. It's fine. All right. So, uh, sorry, Mr. Commentator. I'm going to, uh, or moderator, I'm going to stop the recording because there's no reason to continue to transcribe this. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you very much for your time. Yeah. You've been sitting there for the last 20 minutes going. I can't hear a word.